Oh hey, just catching up on some reading. What's that? You like the coffee table? Funny you should mention that because that is the subject of today's video. I'm going to show you how you can build your very own farmhouse X style coffee table. Let's go. Hey, what's up everybody? Will Mosby here back with yet another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how step by step how to build this really cool, really functional farmhouse X style coffee table. So this coffee table was a kind of a surprise gift over Christmas for my daughter. She's got a real small couch in her bedroom. And uh, so this coffee table is built really for her couch that she has. It's more like a love seat, but it's a, you know, a little small couch in her bedroom. And uh, she was needing something because she had these uh, little ugly cubicles that you could put your feet up on. Sorry if you have cubicles in front of your couch. But she had these uh, cubicles and she just wanted to get rid of it and wanted something, uh, you know, pretty cool. And so um, built this for her and gave it to her, surprise, for a Christmas gift this year, this past year, 2022. And uh, she was very excited to have it. But uh, we're gonna walk through step by step on how to build this thing. So let's run over to SketchUp because always we wanna start there with a plan because you never know how your ideas uh, might work, might not work. So I like to start inside SketchUp and model it out. And so I'm gonna show you the model right now. Here we go. All right, if I'm designing anything new, I like to start inside SketchUp with a 3D model. That's just my go-to and that's just what I'm comfortable with. And here is the farmhouse X style coffee table. It's a cute little coffee table. It's not very big. If you look down here, we're only three feet, eight inches in length. And our width, our total width, total, what is it? 19 and a half inches. And as you can see on the side there, our height of the base is 14 and an eighth inch. Our cross member here between the, the two ends is 16 and a half inches. And then these are just standard, you know, two by sixes up on top that we just cut to length. And that's going to be the first thing that we work on are our four pieces for our top. And we're going to go over to the miter saw and cut all of these guys down to size right now. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is cut four two by sixes to length and the length that I chose was three feet eight inches according to the SketchUp model that I made. And since this coffee table is for my daughter's couch in her bedroom, it's a small couch, this isn't going to be a very long coffee table so you may need to cut your pieces a little shorter, a little longer uh, for your liking. And now we're just laying out the boards and who in the world puts stickers on the face side of a board? Ridiculous. And of course when you pull them up it never comes up so time to get out the sander. And since this is a farmhouse table going in my daughter's room, it doesn't really have to be spectacularly sanded. Just clean it up and that's all I'm doing here. Just kind of going around knocking off some burrs and rough edges. And Now we're going to lay them out kind of in the order. I'm looking at them, inspecting them. I'm going to put them in the order that I would, and poof, there they go. They're just, you know, they're in perfect order. Uh, but we're going to put them in the order that I would like to have them in before the glue up. Now I'm going to take each one of them and flip them over onto their backside so I can mark on them in the order that I want them in. And you'll see why this marking is going and labeling is going to come in real handy here in just a second. Now I'm going to try to get one end about as square as I possibly can before marking on the bottom side. But I'm going to have to make a cut later to square up the other end. Now 
Now we're going to use the framing square and I'm just going to mark across each board in three different spots. One on the left side, one down the middle, and one on the right side. All about six to eight inches away from each end. And then we're going to come back and label each one of these A1, A1, A2, A2, A3, A3. And then in the middle one we're going to do B1, B1, B2. You get it. I don't have to go through the rest of this. You get it. But that's going to come in really handy whenever you go to glue this up and you need to put your biscuits in place. You're going to want to know what goes where, what board goes with what board, because this is the layout that I want. And now that everything is labeled correctly, I can take the biscuit joiner and I'm just testing on a little small piece right now to make sure that the biscuit is going to fit correctly before going into the actual working pieces. And there I'm using a number 20, thanks for the focus, but I'm using a number 20 biscuit and thanks for the focus again. Boy, isn't that just really clear. But that's it. And it looks like it worked out. So now we're going to take our little biscuit joiner and with those lines that I drew on each board, I'm going to go back and put the little biscuit joint in there on that line. So I'm lining up the biscuit joiner with that line on each one of these. Now that we have all of our slots cut, we can put things back in the correct order. Now you see why we labeled things the way that we did. So we have to put these back in the order that we wanted them in, so they glue up very nicely. And we don't have anything running wonky. And here we go. So we're just going to take uh, some good old wood glue, run a bead right down the middle of it. And I'm going to use my fancy glue brush and brush it into uh, the little slot there. Take your biscuit, put it together, voila, go grab the next board. This is actually kind of fun for me. I like glue ups, it's pretty fun. I don't know why. And I'm not going too crazy with the glue, just enough. I don't want a whole lot of spillover because whenever I go to stain this, that glue, even sanding it down, doesn't stain really well. So I'm just trying to get just what I need and I will have to chip off and sand off uh, the excess later. And once everything is glued, we're gonna now clamp it all together and squeeze tight and then we'll set this piece aside. Next, we're going to work on the 2x2 two two support pieces that I've got highlighted here in red. Alright, so now we're going to cut the support pieces, the little 2x2 two two support pieces, and they are set to 34 and a half inches. And I have my miter saw set up with a stop block at the uh, right side there. You can see it uh, to where I make four exact cuts at 34 and a half inches. Your table might be a little shorter or a little longer, so make adjustments where necessary. And these were some 2 by 2s that I just had laying around in my shop, and so they required quite a bit of sanding and prep work to get them uh, ready. So now we're going to be working on our end supports. So that is four two by fours that are cut to 14 and an eighth inch. And then there's also four two by sixes, and there's two here at this end, that are cut to 16 and a half inches wide.
Okay, so I don't know why I didn't show cutting the other three two by sixes, but you get the idea. Now I'm laying things out and going to just make a very light pencil mark an inch and a half in on the end support boards to mark where that two by six is gonna hit because I'm going to be pre-drilling and drilling into that two by six. Now I wanna be right in the center. So here I'm showing you that I've set my combination square to three and a half inches and I put a piece of tape on it marking where I want my pre-drilled holes to go. This will ensure at least some level of consistency. It's always good to have a couple of drills around because you need one with the drill bit and in this case the red drill you see there, the Bauer, has a Forstner bit on it. So this just makes life a little easier, a little more efficient. And there's a nice blurry close-up of the Forstner bit. Now that's a half inch Forstner bit. And I'm using the half inch Forstner bit because I'm going to be putting in half inch button plugs later. So now I'm attempting, and I do say attempting, to use the impact driver. Yes, another drill. So see, there's three drills out there. To use the impact driver and drill in the support leg into that 2x6, but the 2x6 continued to move on me just a little bit. So after a little bit of a, a fight and the 2x6 was winning, but it lost in the end and I was able to get it into the correct position. Now we're going to be working on the top 2x6 support that I've got highlighted here in red. There's going to be one on each end, if that wasn't obvious. And I definitely recommend getting a longer clamp to hold things in place while you pre-drill and screw things together. Again, we're going to use the combination square and just mark our hole locations on the 2x4s. And while we're at it, let's just see what I'm listening to in the garage while I'm working. I think there I had on Foo Fighters Radio from Pandora, and I usually have that or Shine Down Radio or Allison Chains Radio. That's usually my go-to. And yes, I said Pandora. I'm typically not a Spotify user except for things like podcast. My go-to streaming music source is usually Pandora. Don't hate me. And once you get the 2x6 cross braces on, this is what it looks like. So now we're going to be working on the cross pieces, or the X, that I have highlighted here in red. All right, so now we're going to be working on the cross pieces. So just take a 2x4 and line it up with the corners. Put the edge of the 2x4 on one of the corners at the upper end. This is where I made a mistake doing this one, but later corrected it. You can see here that I have the top of the 2x4 positioned in the corner and the bottom of the 2x4 positioned in the corner on the bottom section. That is incorrect. You want to make it so that you screw through the 2x6 to connect to this board, not through the side of the 2x4s. The good news is the process is still the same to get the correct cut angles. Once you have your angles marked, take that 2x4 to the miter saw and lay the 2x4 on its side. Now if you have a miter that will cut a 2x4 on its side, that's helpful. But set your miter to those angles, or to the two angles that you've marked, and then cut your 2x4. Now we're going to use the same method to find the cut angles on the other cross piece, except this time 
we need to cut out that middle section where the other board passes through. And yeah, it's a good idea to have a short enough pencil. All right, to secure the cross piece that we just cut that's highlighted here in red, let's remove this first. You're going to either screw in through the 2x6 here and here, or as you'll see in the video, the way I did it, which is my preferred, the way I did it in the end was I, I screwed in through the 2x6 here. But the way I did it in the video was this piece was anchored along the vertical 2x4 and I came in through the side here and on the other side and down here. Either way is acceptable. The choice is ultimately yours. Then once you have that piece screwed into either the 2x6 or the 2x4, just come back with using like a brad nailer and tack it to the other cross piece through the center there. Or you could use wood glue, that would work out just as fine too. Here's a good view of pre-drilling and screwing the cross piece to the side of the 2x4. It's the same process as we did attaching the 2x6 to the vertical 2x4 pieces. Sometimes your brad nails will stick up and you'll just need to use a little punch, a little steel punch, and just uh, knock them back down. Now I'm using the framing square and going to square up each end of the tabletop. Now I'm not trying to take off a lot, it's just a trim. And I recommend using a guide or a fence so your cut comes out nice and straight. Yeah. Oh yeah, and when starting to cut the end of the table, don't forget to clamp down the other end, otherwise the table's gonna wanna spin on it. Yeah, that would be dumb. At this point, you should have a tabletop that is squared up and sanded to your liking. So now you can throw on some stain and I chose special walnut and applied it with a sponge brush and wiped off the excess with a shop rack. And once that's done, you can move on to painting the base parts before assembly. Yay, painting. So now I'm going to drill pocket holes in all five of the 2x6s that make up the floor of the coffee table. I'm not up on coffee table terminology, so I don't know what else to call these pieces. Now we need to grab these 2x2 two two horizontal floor supports. Sure, that's what we'll call them. But anyway, these guys, grab these guys here in red and find the center of each 2x2. Two then go grab one of the 2x6 floorboards and find the center of that board. Line up these two on center and screw them together. And I'm using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. And once you have the middle 2x6 secured, now you can start adding the other 2x6s, the other four 2x6s on both the left and the right side of that one. I'm just using a half inch piece of some scrap lumber that I had around to give me that half inch separation between each board. So I'll just put it in between the two and 
and start using your two and a half inch pocket holes, screws, and putting it all together. Now we're going to connect the other 2x2 two two, and I'm just pointing out that you want to line that 2x2 two two up in the middle with that center line that we already established. Now it doesn't show it but I actually I flipped the whole base around 180 degrees and I clamped that off so I could push into the clamps. It was a little bit more secure than me trying to push the other direction when trying to screw this in. Now I'm drilling pocket holes on the underside of each of the ends of the table. And this is going to act as the attachment points for the shelf that we just made. Those two by twos are going to attach right there. So all I have to do now is screw the bottom shelf to the table end supports. Now I'm using clamps to give me that extra holding power and holding hands while I screw it in. And finally, we're drilling out the last four pocket holes for the 2x2 two two upper supports that are going to be right below the tabletop. The last step is to mount the tabletop to the table base. And once you've got it lined up in the center and where you like it, use some clamps to keep it there before screwing it in. And I just used some two and a half inch wood screws to secure the table top to the table base. I definitely recommend pre-drilling holes before screwing it all together. And just like that, you're done. And you have successfully made a coffee table. You should be very proud of yourself. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and you can feel confident to go out and build your very own farmhouse X-style coffee table. I'm going to get back to some reading.